regular watchers of this channel might remember me saying a couple of weeks ago that if Mohamed Kadus can't cement his place in the West Ham team by Sheffield United game, he's not going to get in for a long while. Well, I'm here to say <laughs> I don't think he's getting in for a long while. I don't mean he won't feature at all. There could be injuries and David Moyes could do something like shift him to a different position, play him in instead of Antonio, something like that. Clearly he'll play in Europe and clearly he'll play in the, in the cup games and he'll come on as a substitute. However, David Moyes' midfield is undroppable. It is. That midfield three is undroppable. Thomas Suchek was, was my man of the match, as you know, for the uh, game against Sheffield United. He scored the winner against, um, against Lincoln City. He scored before that as well, didn't he? He's three goals this season, I think, if I'm right. He, he's a player in form. We do our, uh, our player ratings at Hammers Chat, as you probably know, on, our, on, on Patreon. We do our player ratings. Um, he's done really, just looking through the player ratings, looking at the numbers he's got, he's done really well this season, Thomas Suchek. Really, really well. I think he's undroppable at the moment. Certainly you look at Newcastle as, as a game that's going to be really, really tough. You look at Aston Villa and we've got Everton on the horizon as well. Maybe not so much Everton, but certainly Aston Villa and Newcastle. David Moyes has got to keep that midfield three. He really has. And I'm not including Lucas Pekatar in the midfield three. And I say this as somebody that wanted Caduceus to get in there. My ideal would have been and I'm sure you already know this, Edson Alvarez, James Ward-Prowse in central midfield. And I think what I really wanted was him to play Caduce on the left and um, and probably Lucas Pacatar up front. But that was, uh, sorry, um, as a number 10. That was before I'd seen Lucas Pacatar on the left and I'd seen his combination with Emerson. So what, this is, I'll be interested to know, what do you think is the best partnership at West Ham this season? It, it, it could be anything. It, you know, if you look in previous seasons, I think, is it Soufal and Bowen? Um, I, I know it's not a Gerd and Zuma, but, you know, were there points last season where that was the best partnership? I'm talking about players that play next to each other on, on the pitch, of course. I think there's certainly been times when, uh, when, when we've seen all manner of combinations. But I think the best combination at the moment at West Ham between two players, complete understanding, is Emerson and Lucas Pacatar. And that happens particularly when Lucas Pacatar is deployed on the left. He's allowed to move, he's allowed to roam. But that's what I think. So now having seen that, OK, well, I've seen some really superb performances from him in that position. I guess going into the Sheffield United game, which is what I said in the preview, I would have played... Caduce as the number 10 at, at, the, at the tip of the midfield and I'd have played Pekatar on the left as I mentioned. That being said, the midfield now is undroppable and that midfield three is James Ward-Prowse, Edson Alvarez and Thomas Suchek. I've already made the case for Thomas Suchek in there and I had to do the, the, the disclaimer and, and say, you know, playing devil's advocate and whatnot. I, I didn't particularly want to see that. I'd have dropped Suchek. But even as someone that would have dropped him, I must concede that he is undroppable now. He really is. He's he's a monstrous goal threat again. It wasn't just that he scored a goal when he was involved in the build-up for one against Sheffield United. It's not just the fact that he scored against Lincoln City. It's not just that he scored before that. that. It's not just that. It's not just the set plays. Look at how many chances he keeps getting. He keeps getting into the box again. That point in time where he was covering for Declan Rice and... You know, maybe doing a lot of a lot of the a lot of the work, a lot of hard work for Declan. Not that Declan was lazy, far from it. Declan, very energetic um, and fit player, but that's gone now. He's now getting into the box. He's now become a huge threat again. And we all know about his ridiculous fitness levels. He was the only one that David Moyes really considered. Well, he was the only person David Moyes thought could play all of a Premier League game. Well, he did he, he, most of a Premier League game could play all of a League Cup game and then another Premier League game. The only person he thought could do that was Thomas Suchek. Mad fitness levels, he really does. I think he's undroppable. How do you, how do you drop your man in a match and a you know, game winner like that? 
because that's what it is. He's got the, you know, scored game-winning goals now. Can't drop Edson Alvarez, can you? I mean, you just can't. You can't drop Edson Alvarez. He is... <laughs> I think he's probably a little bit unlucky that we've had so many other good players, like Jared Bowen. I did a video on Jared Bowen yesterday. You know, like, like, any number of them. Like, like any number of our really good players. Edson, Edson Alvarez, because of the position he plays, sort of goes under the radar a little bit. But he's undroppable. He, he's magnificent. He actually, he, he drops deep sometimes to make that third centre-back. He actually allows us to change our shape and Soufal Su and um, Emerson become wing-backs. There's no surprise, I, I don't think anyway, that for the last three league games, Soufal has got assists. He, never, he was never like that, ever, never like that. I mean, no doubt about the reason that's happened. And that's because Alvarez is dropping back there, making a third centre-back and it's allowing Soufal to go further forward. So Alvarez is on drop ball, which takes us to James Ward Prowse. Well, you know, do I even have to make the case? No, no assist, no assist, and no goal for Ward Prowse against Sheffield United. But I thought he was brilliant. I, I thought actually, do you know what? He's he should have had an assist from you know. I thought a number of his corners were very good. Two of them, one to uh, Knife Gerd, another another one to um, well, who was it? it? Was Jared Bowen? Was you know, bang on the money. Both one of one of them was a bit of a miss from a gird. Uh, was off target. Bowens wasn't a miss. Forced a really good reaction save from the goalkeeper. So I thought that was really good. But it also, but aside from the set play stuff, I thought from open play, Ward Prowse was really good. Really, really good. Undroppable. So if Suchek's undroppable, if Ward Prowse is undroppable, and Alvarez is undroppable, and I'm not saying you have to like it. You just have to understand that that's the way it looks, right? Then. Where's the place for Caduce? Because he can't play for in Bowen's place on the right because Bowen is just on fire, as we as we say again. Uh, he can't play on the left because Pakatar's got to play there, um, and David Moyes just isn't going to change formation. Now the only thing that's left is to wonder whether he can play as a centre forward. We just don't know. But Antonio does so much hard work up there, and I think. A lot of the time, you know, possibly, are you looking at corners? So much of the disruption of our corners. Look, Ward Prowse has got to deliver them and do the hard stuff, but so much of the disruption comes from Antonio in there as well. Um, and I do think he sort of causes havoc. Even when he's not playing particularly well from open play, I think he causes havoc in there. So I just can't see David Moyes is going to drop him. Particularly not for someone who he's unsure can play as a forward. So I just don't think he gets in. At the moment. I really don't. And I just hope he doesn't get disenchanted. I said this in the preview, sorry, in the build up to Sheffield United game. I hope I hope these players don't get disillusioned. And I and I meant sort of Caduce and I went and I meant um Mavropanos. I said for that reason, David Moyes got a win. Well not only did David Moyes win, the player that he probably chose to play instead of Caduce. Scored and got man of the match. Caduce hasn't even got a reason, realistically, to knock on the manager's door. Because even he would know, actually, you know, I'm not getting in while he's playing like that. So he might have to wait for injury. He might have to wait for suspension. He, he might get... Do you know what? That might be his quickest way in. That might... It will be, at some point, relatively soon, Alvarez will serve in a suspension because he cannot help himself. He is so aggressive, he's so attritional, that's the way he plays, he's going to, uh, he's going to get a card, he's going to get another card, he's going to get another card, he'll get, he'll get his ban. He'll serve his ban, that'll just be what happens. And maybe, just maybe at that point, he gets in, because I don't feel there's another midfielder who can come in and, and operate at that level, you know, can't drop, four, what would you do, drop four nails into the midfield or Caduce, you'd drop Caduce in there, or you'd put Caduce wide and you'd drop Pakatar in there, that, that's just what you'd do, that's just what he'll do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I never thought I'd say this. And I didn't, when we were all doing our transfer shows during the transfer window, I never thought the composition of the midfield would be that. I wasn't even sure Alvarez would get in the... I, mean, I wasn't sure. We weren't sure, were we? I, I thought, well, hold on, that's not a... Alvarez, that's a, someone else's sign. It's not Moyes signing. Moyes won't play him. He won't get in the team. Well, he has. He has. And so him, it's, it's Caduce that possibly can't get in the team at the moment. And I'm sure he will at some point. I think once he gets in, he, if 
he'd possibly stay in. He'll possibly put such a good performance in, he'll almost be undroppable. But during the second half of that game, see, I'd made the point before that Caduce deserves the chance to play with Pakatar, to play with Bowen, to play on the pitch with Alvarez, James Ward-Prowse. And I guess he got that for a little bit, but it was late. It was 71 minutes. I mean, and Gio made the point, which was, which was absolutely right in, in his video, which is that tailed off. You know, I, I, I said we were playing in third or fourth gear. And Gio made the observation as well. Whilst he, he didn't, that's another car one. I'm obviously a bit car mad at the moment. Gio didn't make a car observation, but he said we'd stopped sort of playing by that point. So was he on the pitch? I'm talking about Caduce here. Was he on the pitch? Technically, was he on there with James Ward-Prowse and Pakatar and, and so on and so forth? Yes, he was. But not with the same level of intensity that he would have been had he been there from the start in the first half and really going. Because we, we did, we switched off. We did, we did. We, 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 we absolutely, we, do you know, we switched down to, we switched down to night mode. If we're a phone, I don't know why I'm doing analogies again. Off car now, I've got a phone with a laptop. We're in night mode, we're in energy, we're in energy saving mode, weren't we? In that second half. So he came on then, but it's not the same. Anyway, there you go. So, who'd have, who'd have thunk it? West Ham, I think, have an undroppable midfield.